and verse 36. And this is Jesus speaking. The words are written in red. But I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. Now go to 17, John 17. This is the prayer of Jesus. He is praying to the Father before he goes to uh, Gethsemane, before he is crucified. And he says here in verse 4, John 17, verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. You see, Jesus had not been crucified here yet. Now he said on the cross, it is finished, and then he gave up. He gave up the ghost, to said. He gave up. He has not even finished it here. What's he talking about? This was finished from the beginning. This was a finished work. From the beginning, this was finished. From the beginning, this was finished. Your call of God on your life. Remember, Jesus said, the Father sent me, now I send you. Yes. We're God. sent just Whoa. like Jesus. Yes. The call on your life is a finished work. Amen. It's a finished Amen. work. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He said, I've given you works. You are my workmanship. Praise created for God. good works Amen. before. Praise before. God. That's how important these works are yes. that, that we're to do. So this is a finished work. Amen. Now look at 19. Uh, John 19 and verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished. Now go to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 and verse 3. Now Hebrews 3 and 4 are very significant because it says here we're supposed to learn from this. We're supposed to learn from the Israel Israelites uh, mistakes and what they did when they were in the wilderness. That is an example for us today. And it says uh, in Hebrews 4 and verse 3, For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished, from the foundation of the world. The works were finished. He's talking about the Israelites going through the wilderness. He's talking about Moses coming and being used of God to deliver them. That was a finished work. They could have walked in the finished work. They could have wow. walked in the fullness of it. Yes. It was already done. It was already accomplished. Wow. So go back to 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians uh, and verse 17. Now, it's so important for us to realize as Christians, we are walking in a finished work. We're walking in a finished work. We could say, Father, we have finished it. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that before, way before. I have finished it. This is a finished work. Praise God. God is into finishing. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Into completing, into finishing. He's a finisher. Yes. Jesus was a finisher. The disciples were finishers. Yes. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. We are finishers. We are finishing strong. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say that all the time. We are finishing strong. That's right. I'm not finishing scared. Amen. I'm not finishing worried. I'm not finishing mediocre, get by, just, you know, whatever case you're wrong, whatever flows in this earth, in this world. You know, that's just my lot in life. Uh-uh, no, no, no. I'm walking in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Everything that was accomplished, everything that was done, everything Jesus paid for has our name written yes. on it. You know what it says? That we did that. That we are sinless. That we are completely sinless. Hallelujah. So it says here, therefore, if any man be in Christ, say, that's me. That's me. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He's talking about getting saved, getting born again, being redeemed, having Jesus as your Lord and Savior, which is a gift, a free gift. Amen? Amen. So the minute we do that, the second we do that, 
right at that very moment that we step out of that old life and we step into the new, we walk immediately into a life without limits. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We walk immediately, we step right into no limits. Thank you. Now, many believe, many believe that when we die in Christ, when we die and we shed this body and we are in glory with him and we are seated with him and we are, are praising with him and we're at the throne room and we're just, you know, that's the no limits time. That's not what this says. It says it's no limits now. Now. Limitless. Why? Because we have come into a different world, a different realm, a different kingdom. We, we've come into the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. There's no limits there. So we need to judge everything from that kingdom. Judge it. Even though we're in the world and we go by the laws of the world, we go by the things of the world, we still are not of this world. We are of the kingdom of God. We are of the kingdom of God. We are aliens here. We're aliens here. Amen. Praise God. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just like if royalty, the Queen of England, she's not alive anymore, but the Queen of England, well, yes, there's a new queen, the Queen and King of England come here. They have not left their throne, their position, their place, their royalty. They have not left it there. They're royalty here. And they're to be treated as so. And they, they reign as so yeah. here. Mm -hmm. But they don't take on, they're not limited with here. No, right. if there's something they need, it's flown right in. Amen. It's right. brought right in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So they're not without here. Yes. It's the same there. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Jesus walked in this first to show us how to walk in this. He walked in it and made the way. He walked in it to pave the way. Yes. Hallelujah. To clear the way. Whew. Thank you, Lord. But, but this is what we deal with. We've been born here, raised here. We've been raised in the things of this world. And those are limits. And many of them are, are not true. And they're not the truth. The truth is what God says is true. Yes. Amen. That is the truth. And the definition of that truth is the highest form of reality that exists. The highest form of reality that exists. The highest form of reality that exists. So when we go to someone on this earth here for help or for advice or for just remember there's a higher there's a higher, it depends on who they're listening to, That's right. who they're led by. Because yes. whoever they're led by is now we will be led by. Mm -hmm. So our whole thing now is the greatest thing that we can do as Christians is learn how to flow with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Be led by the Holy yes. Spirit. To uh, live in the, in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you. And there's pressure in this world against them. Not just they're not doing it. It's they're against it. Mm -hmm. There's resistance. There's, uh, it's almost like, well, it says it's an en en enemy. The carnal mind, the ways of the flesh is enemy yes. with the Spirit of God. And so we have to remember that. So when we try to flow in this above the truth, we've got this. So whenever in your life you're coming to this, things aren't working. Yeah. You know, it's just, man, you're, tr you're just struggling. You're just trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. You're not flowing with the Holy Spirit. Get in the flow. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. The greatest way you can get in the flow is praying in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praying in the Spirit. Because then you just get into the Spirit. In Jude, it says, build yourself up. And, and one uh, definition says, uh, it gives kind of the likeness of charging to a battery. Charge yourself up. 
by praying in the Spirit. Yes. Charge yourself up. So uh, because limitation is from the old life, we have to stay in the new. We have to stay in the new life. We have to walk in this new life, learn this new life, yeah. become skillful in this new life. So it's kind of like going to a, a foreign land, a foreign country. We have a different language now that we're to learn, flow in, become skillful in. There's different ways that supersede this, that, uh, that make, don't make sense to us, we don't always understand. Amen? Amen. And we have a king. Yes. We have a king who's our Lord and Savior. And we're to follow him and be workers together with him. So this is a new way. Because in the world, we're taught to be independent. We don't have to listen to anybody. You don't have to just talk to a 13-year-old. You, you know, you could, I don't have to listen to you. I don't have to do that. I don't have to, right? That's not the new way. <laughs> That's not going to work here. So the flesh limits us. The old life limits us. But when we're saved and our mind is renewed, we, are, uh, we go into the unlimited. Amen. We can walk in the unlimited. Life in Jesus Christ is unlimited. Yes. Woo! Right. So uh, some of the things that we've been told in this life that's limited is uh, our brain. We've been told that our brain ages. Just like you would see, you know, the other things age. Our brain ages. That is a lie. Mm -hmm. That is a lie. Scientists have proved, proved that our brain gets better as we age. See, and we, we've got to take that. Yes. And we've got to make the decision, that's my brain. Amen. 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 See, everything we decide is what's going to be in our life. We decide that. We make, we're making the decision right now. Are we going to take this word and root it in and get it rooted in us? Or are we going to be a casual listener like we're watching a show? <laughs> or we make that decision all the time. I mean, when I'm sitting listening to teaching, there's a few times my mind will wander. wander. Oh, yeah, i got to go to Walmart. And we have to, oh, I have to get bananas. And I have to get, uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, i got to get back on. You know, and I'll be listening to teaching at home, and my mind will go off, and I'll have to go, whoops, 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 I gotta go back, gotta go back, right? Or something was just really hit me right in, right in my heart, and I gotta go back, and I'll go back, and I'll go back, and I'll keep listening to it until I got it, mm -hmm. until I got it. That's how it is. So another uh, limitation is we've been told that our muscles, that there's a certain age limit, that we have muscle failure. That they get weaker, we're slower, we're, we're not as flexible, mm -hmm. we're not a, as agile. You know, I, I can't just sit on the floor and play now and get up. And I can't, you know, do that staircase or I can't. Well, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. Now scientists are saying and have proven that muscle knows no age. Yeah. Is that amazing? And you can start at any age to get your muscle strengthened again. Any age you can start and get your muscles strengthened again. Isn't that amazing? Wow. That's amazing. Wow. So, so then we would have to calculate scientifically that if we come to a certain age and our muscles are weak and stuff, we've made that decision to have weak muscles. True? Yeah. Is that true? That's right. Yeah. If, if our brain is uh, showing age and decreasing, well, we, we have done something that we need to seek the Lord on. What do I need to change here? Mm -hmm. Because that is not the way you created it. True? Yeah. yeah. Just like uh, we needed to get saved. Every, every single person is born in to sin into the curse and we need to be redeemed we need a savior we've made that decision every one of us so people that would go to hell then the only reason they would go is because they've decided to go there's not one person that's going to go that didn't know 
Not one. They have decided to go. Mm -hmm. Well, if a person gets saved, the reason they got saved was they heard and they decided to believe. Believing is a decision. Mm -hmm. You've decided to believe in Jesus Christ. You've decided to believe in the Bible. You've decided to ask Jesus to be Lord mm -hmm. of your life. You've decided to give your life to God. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so this should be free. Amen. This should be yes. free. Yes. I mean, don't get under condemnation. This should be free. Amen. I get to decide. Yes. I get to decide. Yes. Praise, Praise God. Right. Now, as a Christian, with, with this amazing new creation life, been made completely like him, like God, we can decide to be like him. Okay. Yes. We can decide when I read, I have the mind of Christ. Yes. I have his thoughts, his, his yeah. feelings, yeah. intents, the purpose yeah. of his heart. I can decide to have that. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And so our walk is as close to God as we decide for it to be. We're walking and living in the Spirit as far and as close and as deep and as high as we decide. As we decide. We just need to make that decision. It just yeah. needs to be a desire of our heart. Yes. It needs to be a desire of our heart. So I want to show you. I hope nobody's offended in this. I just want to show you this because I like to see these things because it encourages me. Yeah. It encourages me because this is new. This is new. We're just hearing about this in this, this time, mm -hmm. at this time. And so I have a few little videos here. Some of these people are, are over 100 years old. Some of them, what, a, a man that we're going to show here, he's 73. He started this when he was 70, just three years ago. And it, this is just so incredible. So please do not get offended, okay, because they're wearing gym clothes. Is everybody mature enough that you can handle gym clothes? Is that okay? Brianna, just put your, okay. <laughs> I've seen you wear gym clothes. All right. <laughs> All right. So this lady, whoops, I don't have the, the. So I have videos and two pictures. Okay, good. So the two pictures are on Okay, here. these are the two pictures. This is her when she's young, and this is her at this age. And I can't remember what age she is. Does it show? Um, it was 103. 103 wow. years wow. old. 103 years old. Now, here's the deal. She is no different than us. She has the same muscles, the same bones the same yeah. here's the difference she decided that she wasn't going to lose that mm -hmm. she made that decision Amen. and so she's done things so that she would not lose that yeah. is that okay with everybody yeah. okay mm -hmm. so don't get condemned mm -hmm. get inspired yes. get encouraged yes. okay because yes. none of us right now are like her can anybody go do that can anybody come up here and do that right now okay then do we're okay. Okay. Okay, so you're going to show a little... There's one more picture. Okay, one more picture. Oh, wow. Okay, this lady, she she has won... Uh, um, is this the Olympics? I think this is the Olympics. Yeah. And she's 100... 105. Wow. 105! Wow, 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 wow. 105! Why would a 105-year-old even think about running a race? even think about that she she either was not taught mm -hmm. to believe mm -hmm. how we have been taught all these years right. or she somebody inspired her somebody says God gives us the gives us the desires of our hearts yes. praise God so do you have a video of her um, let me or which video are you talking about let me pull up the video okay they're not in order okay they're not in order should I show all the pictures first can't see it. All the pictures are done. Now it's videos. Oh, okay. Videos. I like videos. Asked me three years ago if I could do this. I would have oh. laughed at you. Okay. I, we you can't, can't see, see it. what I'm seeing? Come on. No. Now this is amazing. You're going to like this. This is amazing. Now she's 73. You would ask me three years ago if I could do this. I would have laughed at you. I'm 73 years old now. And before I started this journey, 
I had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, acid reflux, and arthritis. There was a time I couldn't even bend down comfortably and sit on the floor. One day, my daughter came to me and said, Mom, you got a choice. Either you're going to end up in the hospital needing a lot of care, or you can make yourself better and I'll be there for you all the way. In 2017, I joined an online program for women committed to getting into shape. I had no expectations. I just wanted to get off my medication and stay out of the hospital. First year, I lost 45 pounds. The second year, I lost another 10 pounds. I also eat five meals a day. Oh, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> and I meditate in the morning to help control my mindset. Don't ever tell yourself it's too hard, you're too old, it's too late. Remind yourself that poor health is not inevitable. And aging doesn't have to be a death sentence. Look at me. Okay, can you show the next ordinary one? woman who will love was that incredible? Yes. That is incredible. This lady's 105. Is that right? Yep. Okay. She set the world record. Oh my gosh. 105 years old. Wow. Wow. going to run a race. Maybe you're not going to have your arms out to here. But but glorify God. Yes. Amen. You know, uh, God has gifted us with this body. Yeah. And he has, he has shown us what we can do. And the truth is coming out. There's so much truth coming out that, that exposes so many lies that we have had through so many years. It's like we can never think about the old life again, mm -hmm. as that's our life. We, you know what, everything we do, everything we do, everything we do, it should be to glorify God. Yes. To glorify God. Every, I mean, every step we take, 
every word, every action, um, everything we put in, everything we put on, everything, everything, we should be walking epistles yes. of God's holiness of his goodness, of his love, of his prosperousness, of his generosity, of his faithfulness. We should be, we should, we should be different. We should be different. Praise God. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 3 and 21. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 21. God will give you a plan right where you're at if you are willing and open to him to, uh, to show you. And to teach you, and the Holy Spirit will strengthen you and help you to do uh, uh, what He wants you to do to glorify Him. Um, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Wow. Let's say that last sentence together. All things are yours. Now say, all things are mine. All things are mine. Is that amazing? Then he goes on, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, which is Peter, or the world, or life or death of things present, or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ, and Christ is God. So he hit the whole thing. Uh, the world, life, death, things present, things to come. Wow. Past, future, present, I mean the world, wherever, every single solitary place, all things things yeah. are yours. Praise yeah. God. All Hallelujah. things. Praise God. All yeah. things yeah. are yours. Yeah. All yeah. things yeah. are yours. Yeah. That's how good yeah. God is. That means everything that Jesus walked in is ours. Everything that God has. From the very, we're, we're talking about the beginning here. The beginning plan of God was let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. So God blessed him and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over yes. everything, yes. every yes. living yes. thing. That has not changed. The only thing that changed was man. Man did. And But Jesus came and bought us back and brought us back. In the Passion Bible, it says, you already have everything. It has all been given for your benefit. Everything belongs to you. Praise God. Uh, Ephesians 1.3 says, All spiritual blessings in heavenly places are yours. Yes. Praise God. So we're talking about physical. We're talking about spiritual. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Wow. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. Who? it's not about the old life. That doesn't exist. Everything old has passed away. When those old things try to come up, you say, nope, 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 that's old, that's gone. That doesn't even, I don't even know who that person is. You want, all things are new. So we've got to start a new way of thinking. Um, so look at uh, Ephesians 4, please. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Now, if we talked like this on a regular basis, yes. we would think like this. Yeah. And if we would think like this on a regular basis, we would talk like this. Amen. And if we would talk like this, we would think like this. Yeah. 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 And if we would think like this, we'd be like this. Amen. We'd Thank walk God. in the fullness of this. Amen. We'd walk in all of Praise this. God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed. Oh, that is not the scripture. That is not the scripture. That is not the scripture. Oh, 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 oh. Colossians. Colossians. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Galatians. It's Galatians. It's Galatians. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Galatians. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so Galatians uh, 3, 29 says, And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs, according to the promise. And then uh, 4, verse 7 says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God. 
an heir of God through Christ. And you need to write, you need to circle heir of God, and you need to write what the Passion Bible says, because it says we can access everything God has. Woo, thank you, Lord. I mean, think what God has. Wow, it's amazing. We're an heir of God. Woo! Wow. All things are yours. Hallelujah. We're an heir of God. There's no limits. That means we can walk in the in a, a realm of no limits. In the in right here, right now. Look at uh, 420. Oh, Ephesians. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This this is for sure. I wrote this one down. Ephesians 4 and verse 22. Now, how do we get there? How do we get there? How do we get to this place where we start walking in this and we start living in this? So it says here in 422 that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now I've got this in five translations. Woo! Amen. Because they each say something a little bit more. Yeah. So let's start out with the easy one. This is the easy to read. You were taught to leave your old self. This means that you must stop living the evil way you lived before. That old self gets worse and worse because people are fooled by the evil they want to do. You must be made new in your hearts and in your thinking. Be that new person who was made to be like God, truly good and pleasing to Him. Woo! Praise God. Praise God to be made like God, truly good, pleasing Him. Here's the Amplified. That regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self, completely discard your former nature which is being corrupted through deceitful desires and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude and put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature created in God's image, God-like, in the righteousness and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. Hallelujah. Here's an Amplified Classic. Strip yourselves of your former nature. Put off and discard your old renewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lusts and desires that spring from delusion. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. And put on the new nature, the regenerate self, Created in God's image, God-like, in true righteousness and holiness. Here's the Living Bible. Then throw off your old evil nature, the old you that was a partner in your evil ways, rotten through and through, full of lust and sham. Now your attitudes and thoughts must all be constantly changing for the better. Yes, you must be a new and different person, holy and good. Clothe yourself with this new nature. The last one is the message. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces His character in Ooh, you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise Glory God. to God. So unbelief depends on feelings. That's the old man. That's the old way. Oh, how do I feel? That doesn't make me feel. You can see in the world, it's all about feelings and emotions. How do you feel today? What do you feel like? You feel like a frog? Are you a cat today? Are you, you know, a bird? I mean, it's crazy. Feelings, feelings, and these kids are being brought up that their feelings are more important than, than what God has said, what he is saying. Man, that's so sad. Faith depends on the promises of God, not the feelings. Faith depends on the promises of God. That's what we live for, the promises of God. That's what we live in. 
That's what we walk in, the promises of God. So turn with me to Exodus 14. And we're going to look at a huge step here, a huge step in doing this. This is going to change everything. Exodus 14. Now, uh, this is the story about Moses and the Israelites. And um, they've been in the wilderness, going around and around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And um, this, oh, actually, I'm so sorry. This is when they first came out. They first come out of slavery. Now, you have to remember, uh, there was hundreds of years in slavery. And so many, many generations were grown up in slavery. And because of that, when they said they were going to get free, oh my gosh, remember when we were in quarantine of COVID? Everybody was excited at first, no work, we get to stay home. And that quickly changed. We are not, we are herd people, we are family people. We are not to be by ourselves. And when we, when the quarantine finally ended, and, and we, we just kind of, we didn't just charge back and go, woo, party in the street. No, no, no. Everyone was so timid about it. There are still people wearing masks. Yeah. Yeah. Still people. I remember Tom asked one of the kids once, he said, why are you still wearing masks? I'm just wondering. And the kid said, because I feel cool wearing a mask. See, see how this is? And it's all in here with him. Yeah. Actually, you're harming yourself. Anyways, so they didn't, people didn't just charge out. Well, they didn't do that with this either. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're leaving slavery, and they come to a point that God purposely brought them to, mm -hmm. and it was the Red Sea. He purposely brought them there. And um, they, here they are in a situation. They've got the Egyptians coming after them. Pharaoh changed his mind, gets his whole army on chariots together to come after them, to kill them to bring them back into slavery, and then they've got the Red Sea before them. And uh, so Moses, it says here in verse 10, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Now, there was a vast difference between the Israelites and Moses. Vast difference. What was the difference? They were looking at the Egyptians. They were looking at the sea, and they saw death. Moses was looking at the Lord. Yeah. Look how many times he said the Lord. Look at how he was talking about the Lord. Look at how he said how powerful and how good God is. God told them the plan ahead of time. I'm bringing it to the promised land. And Moses, he kept his eyes on God. When you see God, you don't see the old slavery. You're not thinking about going back. That doesn't look like that's the answer. God is the answer. God is the answer. You, you don't look at the past. You don't look back. You don't even look at the future. You keep your eyes on God. You just keep your eyes on God. And so then in verse 15, and the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? He's like, What are you coming to me for? He says, What are you crying about? He says, Go forward. Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Go forward. Well, that makes no sense. That's not logical. That doesn't even feel right. That just makes no sense. We're going to go forward and walk right into that Red Sea. Does he think we're going to swim over there? Right? I mean, God is saying, go forward, walk on. <laughs> and, and those that are living in the old life, they're going to be like, uh-uh, no way, we're going to die. They're going to say what the Israelites said, if you're living the old life. 
But those that are living the new life, they're going to they're gonna say, all right then, all right. Why? Because they're going to see the truth. They're going to be living in the reality. Yes. They're going to be looking at the promise of God, yes. standing on the promise of God, believing the promise of God. So then uh, in verse 16, the Lord goes on, But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Wow. 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 This doesn't make any sense. Only to those that are living the new life. Only to those that are standing on that promise. I'm sending you to the promised land. I've got a land for you. It's good. It's good. What did Moses do? He walked in the presence of God. He walked on the presence of God. This yes. reminds me of Peter walking on the water. And Jesus said, come. G Peter said, if that's you, Lord, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. He gets out of that boat. I can't even imagine that first step and letting go of the boat. Now the winds are like this. The winds are like this. And it's it, and the waves. And, and he's stepping out in that. He's going to step out. It's not even like glass. Well, this is like glass. This is going to be no problem at all. He just, you know, goes out there. No. He, it's like this. What did he walk on? He walked on the promise of come. Amen. Come. He walked on that. He walked on the promise. All he could see was the promise until he looked away. Till he looked at the waves. Till he looked. Yep. Yep. So our mind actually, in a way, we just detach that. And we just go with our heart. We just go with that. Now, let's look at, uh, and we, we know the story. They walked in, in the Red Sea. We know the story. I don't want to leave them hanging there. They did go through the Red Sea. <laughs> they were okay. So let's go to Numbers for 13, Numbers 13. And this is when they get to the border of the Promised Land. They're finally there. I, I turn to my husband and I say, whatever you do, you do whatever that Moses says. And we're getting out of here. I'm done camping. <laughs> I'm done with sand. I'm done with sand and everything. I'm eating sand. I'm breathing sand. I'm thinking sand. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, here they are at the border. And the Lord tells Moses to send out 12 spies. And we know the story. So the spies go into the promised land. And they come back. And everybody's excited. They're gone for 40 days. They're excited. They're excited. They're still in there. I'd be like, that man of mine better be coming back here soon. Because I'm getting out of here. We're going in that promised land. I'd probably get the women together. Ladies, let's be the first ones to go. <laughs> no, I'd get in trouble. Okay, verse 25. And they return, uh, uh, 13. Numbers 13, sorry. Verse 25. And they return from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And the fruit was awesome. The people were probably pretty excited. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou settest us, sentest us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. So here, everything God said was true. It was true. They have not said anything about the Lord here so far. Mm -hmm. Verse 28, Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are wild and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak here. And then they go on and they tell about all this stuff. On and on. They never said one thing about God. Never thought about God. Wasn't looking at God. Not one thing. They were looking at the fruit. They were looking at uh, uh, these strong people that are there that are very great. They were looking at the walled city. Never said one thing about God. Not one thing. Then in verse 30, Caleb speaks up. And he stills the people before Moses. And he said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up, that's the new life. That's, I'm going into the new life. I'm walking into this. I'm going into this. I'm going with God. But the men that went up with him said, we're not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up a what kind of report? What kind of report? Evil. Evil report of the land. What about when we give a report? 
oh, this is big this time, this is serious this time, that bill is really big, that symptom, whoo, that's really scary. Oh, that report we got, that's really bad. What about that report? When, when we've got the report of the Lord, he's already told us our new life, our new creation, our redemption, our freedom, the victory, the triumph, the anointing, Woo! the life of God, the power of God. All things are ours. Woo! So they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Wow. Wow. They didn't even see God. They didn't even talk to God. They never meant all they talked about was the land, the fruit, the giants. It's all they talked about. They better not go in that way. Right? They better not go in. <laughs> not believing. Not having any faith at all. Now let's look at uh, Numbers 14. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation. See, what happens is, is when you believe God and you keep your eyes on God, there's going to be a lot of Christians that are mad at you. Yep. They're going to talk about you. They're going to, you know, may, probably maybe come against you, maybe get mad at you. That's exactly what happened with Jesus, with the Pharisees and the scribes. That's why they were so mad. Jesus was walking in the new life. He was walking in the power of God, the anointing of God. He was close to God. He heard God. He moved with God. His words were God. And theirs wasn't. Nothing was happening at all. They were stuck in tradition, yeah. stuck in, yep, and so they were mad. And so that can happen. That can happen here. And so let's jump to verse 6. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, it is an exceeding good land. Now watch how many times they talk about the Lord. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. They, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. And he was repeating the same words that the ten spies said. They were saying that uh, uh, they're going to eat our they're going to eat our lunch, and he was saying we're eating their lunch. That's right. Yes. Praise God. And and but the congregation they wanted to stay with the ten. They wanted to stone them. They wanted to kill them. Now that that's pretty mad. That's pretty upset. Wow. Wow. They didn't keep they didn't keep their eyes on. But Caleb and Joshua did. Look at verse uh, 30. Numbers 13, verse 30 again. And Ca Numbers 13, verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once. Let us go up at once. He saw the same things. He saw that wall. He saw the strong people. He saw the giants. He saw all that. He was like, let's go get it and let's possess it, for we're a well able to overcome. Amen. And then he says here, he said, don't rebel against the Lord. Don't rebel, don't fear. Trust God. He will delight in us. He will bring us into this land. Praise he God. will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now look at Numbers 14, verse 24. And God is speaking now. He says, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Wow. Caleb pleased God. Glory to God. He had a different, he saw God, he believed God, he trusted God, he lifted up God, he honored God. Amen. 
God was more real to him than that land, that fruit, those giants, that great wall. He had no fear. No fear. He trusted God. Praise God. He was saying, God is bigger. Yes. Yes. God is greater. Praise God. Oh, praise God. When we see the presence of God, we don't see any giants. Why? Because we're a man, a woman, a person, a child of God, of the Spirit. We're of the Spirit. We're walking in the Spirit. We're walking in the flow of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is a big God. Don't, don't limit Him with your mind, with your feelings, your emotions, how you feel about yourself, how you see yourself, how you see your life. Don't limit Him. Amen. Don't Praise limit God. life in yes. the Spirit, walking this in the Spirit as we see God, we see the covenant, we see the promises, not the situation, not the circumstances, Amen. not the symptoms. Amen. We, Amen. See right. we see God. We see God. That gives Amen. place to God. That gives place. And when we live, that old life, we see what the devil is showing us. They were seeing what, what the devil was showing. Questioning God. Questioning. No faith. Unbelief. And then the way we see ourselves is the way the devil sees us. Right? This is what they said. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. And you know what? That's true for them now. That's true for them now. Because people who don't live and walk in the spirit, the way they see themselves is the way the devil sees them. I'm old. I'm, you know, I'm poor. I'm not, I'm stupid. I'm, you know, not talented. I'm, you know, whatever. I'm too short, too tall, whatever. No. We're a new creation. We're brand new creatures. Amen. We're His righteousness. Yes. We're holy, chosen, Amen. loved, accepted, Amen. strong, wise, Amen. walking, living in faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And all things are ours. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Uh, so in Numbers 14, what we read there, that was all negative. There was all negative talking. This is bad. This is really bad. You don't understand what they've said. You don't understand what they've done. You weren't there. This isn't happening to you. No. And guess what reality is? It's truth. And you follow the truth. And you believe the truth. And the truth said, only goodness and mercy yes. shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Another translation says, surely and only and certainly goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow you, pursue you, chase after you. Praise God. All the days of your life. And you will dwell in the presence of the Lord with eternal life all the days of your life. Hallelujah. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's reality. That Those giants, that's not even real to us. That's not even real to us. Hallelujah. Yes, those spies. Okay, so we have to look at one more thing here. We have to look at uh, 1422. Numbers 1422. This is the Lord speaking. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now, these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers neither shall any of them that provoked me see it mm -hmm. wow. so when we think or when the enemy tells us or when our flesh is saying well if I saw an angel I mean that would just solidify everything or or if I if I would actually see the glory of God that would be cool or, or if I saw a miracle, right? That wasn't enough here. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. You can't walk in those on a daily basis. We don't put our trust in those. We, we walk in God. God is the one we walk in. He's our new creation. He's the word of God. He's the promises of God. We walk in Him. 
We trust in Him. We keep our eyes on Him. We keep our focus on We are single-minded. Single-minded. Though a thousand fall at one hand, ten thousand at my other hand, I will not be moved. It will not come near me. No evil will befall me. No plague will come now in my dwelling. None. Hallelujah. So I was studying this this week, you know, going over it and over it and over it and over it. Get it into me. Get it in my heart. And remember when I told you I went through a couple months of ants in our bedroom. It was on the windowsill and I had ants stuff everywhere and it just went on. First it was red ants, then it was black ants, then it was ants with wings, then it was... I mean, you finally get a clue, don't you? Finally get a clue. Okay, this isn't even normal. This isn't even normal. So the other day... Uh, they were gone. The, the other day, the ants came back. Mm. And uh, they were all over the windowsill. Just, you know, so I had the poison out. And you're supposed to let them eat the poison. You're not supposed to kill them. Because they bring it back to their, their lair. They bring it back to their hideout. And back to hell, probably. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, so I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at these scriptures. I'm going through this again. And I thought, this is a plague. Yes. This is a plague. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. And so I just, I was sitting in my bed. I, I just do my devotions right in my bed. I got my coffee right here on my candle warmer that warms my coffee and I, or my tea. And I've got all of my books for all. By the time Tom comes to bed at night, he's got to make up his side all over again, don't you? His pillows are like over there. Because I've got everything out. And I've got, you know, and my notebook and papers and pens. And where'd that pen go? That's okay. I got another one right here. And I just, you know, and this is my whole, yeah. And uh, so I was just studying this. And all of a sudden, that revelation came. And it didn't just come like, oh, this is a play. It came like, that's a play. Because you know what? That's how God feels about plagues. Wow. Yeah. That's exactly how the Holy Spirit feels about plagues. And then I was reminded, do you know all those plagues, all those plagues with Pharaoh, all those plagues with the Israelites, it never touched the Israelites.